This Saturday, I had a chance to play in the worldwide first Star Wars Unlimited Store Showdown tournament. And in this video, I will give you a summary of our 90 players tournament, feedback from its format, and what I learned from the games that I played with my scum deck, which is Sabine Ren Aggro. Let's jump in. So, story time. The tournament was held in Poznan, in my hometown, and it was in the um, Mercury Hotel, which was very surprising to me because, you know, as a 38-year-old player that played countless TCGs in his past, I am used to play in sweaty basements where there's no daylight and we'll sit like cave trolls. So playing in an actual really good hotel lobby, I mean, not lo lobby, but it's like an entire hall, right? It's like a, an entire room with good lightning, with AC, with nice toilets, and a lot of space was really something that I enjoyed a lot. And we had 90 players, maximum was 128. Uh, but again, this was a tournament that had literally happened like over a week after the game released. So we were not even anticipating that we we're going to have that many, but it was incredibly awesome to see that we got 90 players. Now, first, what did I expect fully from the organizers is that I had no expectations. I had no idea who they are. Uh, the company organizing this tournament is uh, called Nerd which is in Polish for nerds, essentially. Uh, and I never attended a tournament uh, that was organized by them before. And I have to say, they did a fantastic job. We had, as I said, the um, hotel uh, rented out for the tournament. Uh, there was a lot of space. They invited one of the artists, uh, Sandra, who, was, who drew, for example, the card Aggression uh, or the Mace Window Legendary. Um, and uh, we had uh, a store with uh, with some stuff that you can buy as well. There. We had really nice pricing. Uh, and uh, in general, it was very smooth. We had no delay was literally like 10 minutes after 10. Well, actually, it was like 15 minutes delay, but that's like no delay. When you, If you ever played in a live tournament, like in any game, or is it a, a LAN tournament for some computer games, or if you played any board games or any card games, you know there's always a huge delay when it's a big event. Here, we started like 15 minutes after... The initial announcement was 10 a.m. and um, the first round was on on the uh, on the way. Uh, the judges were on point. If at least I don't know about the rulings, but they were available, so that's that's a plus, right? Whenever someone had a judge call, they were literally right there. Um, everything was smooth sailing. Uh, announcements were done with a PA system, um, and uh, yeah really good organ organ uh, organizers like i hope they're gonna do more tournaments because this was splendid and the fee to enter the tournament was not even that big if i remember correctly i paid but i was the early bird like the literally the moment they released it i bought the ticket it was i think 25 no less than 25 euros i paid 100 zotis which is like 22 euros right now it was a higher price a little bit later if you're buying like late but it was like five euros more so essentially, essentially the the, uh, the entrance for the tenant was not that big when you consider how it was organized, and um, in general, kudos, very very nice. Nicely done, and I hope they're gonna do more tournaments in the future. Oh, and I forgot to mention, we had also a stream um, a stream table uh, that was that was streaming games from every um, every round, and that's also a huge plus because that gives you a, a, an additional content uh, from the tournament and uh, feedback from that point is though they need to invest in a better camera because the camera was not the best. It was like 720p or something. So that could have been worked on, but again, uh, it's the first tournament ever that they did in Star Wars Unlimited. And it, from, from all the points that I made, they, they did a great job. When it comes to prizes, we actually had a lot of prizes. First and foremost, we had the promos that will be given out by the um, the actual company that makes Star Wars Unlimited, so Fantasy Flight Games. So we had the legendaries um, like Maze Window for the champion, uh, for the finalists, for the top four, and for the top eight, right? So uh, you are able to get the unique alt art legendaries with the stamps uh, for those specific 
uh, specific spots. For an attendance, you are getting an odd, odd um, takedown, but also the judges are getting a foil takedown with the judge stamp on it. Apart from that, there was a lot of prizes, as you can see on the footage, with boxes, playmats, custom playmats for the events, um, uh, playmats from FFG, the boxes from Game Genic, all of that was in the pool for the um for the prize pool as were the uh first place second place third place uh trophies as well so really good job when it comes to the prize pool too it was actually incredibly generous to my own from my own perspective i think at least you know if you have a different perspective you can leave a comment but i think the prizes were really good so what was the format like because we played a swiss tournament right and we had 90 people so a swiss with 90 people should be very straightforward you just pair the winners with the winners and the losers with the losers and so on and so on and so on as long as you played eight rounds and i think you should have a top eight now there was a different idea that the organizers had because they wanted to give out as many promos as possible essentially what happened is that even though we had 90 people we didn't really play a 90 people tournament which was very disappointing to me uh but there's also an upside to that so let me explain this the organizers got four kits of the store showdown tournament with the promos and so on with because each kit is designed for a 32 player tournament right which obviously uh was not enough if they plan to get over 100 players right so the idea that the organizer had was we're gonna get all the people into one room and we're gonna divide them into groups so essentially each group would be a separate tournament a separate store showdown tournament that you can play in and then the winners from that group will play against each other in a final games essentially so even we, what ended up happening is the 90 players got divided into groups of 23, essentially, right? Um, and they were playing against each other in a Swiss tournament. Then you had a top, top eight cut from each group. So eight players advanced from all of the four groups and then played in a top 32 single LM tournament. And you were getting the promos from from getting the top eight and winning the top eight in the swiss portion not in the top 32 in the top 32 where you're battling for the other prizes like the boxes and like uh, all the all the uh physical stuff um that is not the promos so now it's very generous that because you know the organizer could say you know what no i'm we're just gonna play 90 players and we're gonna give a set of promos just for one top eight and that's it so there would be only a one champion um, promo given out for this tournament and only eight top eights um, promos and so on. But what ended up happening is we literally just had four tournaments of the Soul Showdown and uh, more promos were given, given out. But the problem is that I came to the tournament with the idea in my mind that I'm going to play in a really big tournament and that was really hype to me. The problem is that we played in four smaller tournaments and because of that even though everything was great i just didn't feel like i'm actually playing in a big tournament which was disappointing right but that's my personal opinion uh maybe other people didn't feel that way one more change that was being made and that was that is actually a big negative point from the tournament was the change that the organizers did um, to the actual point system so in star wars unlimited or in flesh and blood if you win a game you win a game if you lose a game you lose a game you get three points and zero points right but if there's a draw between the players you you both get zero points right so there's no incentive to drawing any of the games in this particular tournament the organizers changed it so if there's a draw both players get one point so what ended up happening is in the swiss portion of the tournament when the last round was being played out which is the fifth round the players from the top potentially the top eight all shook their hands took the draws and didn't even play so essentially you in some groups um in all of the groups that happened but in some groups the entire top eight was decided without playing a literal round because they already had an advantage like if you have you know you you played 
four rounds and you won all of them so you have 12 points you just sh shake the entire ha shake your opponent's hand and you can go to 13 points no one else can get over you right if you have nine points and you shook someone's hand you get a 10 you and if you just count the tiebreakers and so on you have like nine 100 chance that you're going to be in top eight so but that is something that was being solved you know years ago in other games because this was happening over and over and over and over in other games it was always annoying that's why draws are counting for zero in flesh and blood draws are counting in zero in star wars unlimited and i don't know about other games but those are the two that um it really counts for right because we play a best of three so uh, the reason the organizers did that is because apparently there's a technical limitation in the software that was being used to pad the players in. And the software was not able to give out zero points for players who were drawing. There was no way, way of getting them a double loss. Now, maybe there was, should be, in this case, a different software being used or something. Um, yeah. But that's a feedback from the tournament. Uh, you know, other, uh, like... That definitely should not be done again. Um, and players will always abuse that stuff because that's just how it is, you know? And uh, I think the organizers definitely will learn from this. But overall, this is the one really negative point from the tournament. It has nothing to do with the actual atmosphere in the tournament when it comes to how it was organized. It's just the rules that need some changing. But the upside is fantasy flight games who is the who is the creator of this game already accounted into that and the official tournament rules are that draws are for zero points right so yeah so i have four deck lists from the top eight and we're missing still four now I'm, what i'm gonna do is as soon as the to will release them i'm gonna add it to the description of this video so even post factum it's still gonna be relevant and gonna be able to check the other deck lists that were in the top eight so without further ado uh let's uh, see what were the uh first deck well the first deck was the winner's deck director Kranich, which is for me was a little bit of a surprise because again i didn't have a lot of experience with actual gameplay of Souls before this tournament that was i played in, in like a draft and one constructed uh tournament and seeing director Kranich on first um or like being pretty popular in the tournament was actually kind of surprising now overall the deck plays pretty simple it's just a control deck like Aiden, but with uh, uh with the cargo juggernaut and uh, the scout bikes pursuers to combo with Kranik and the beginning to control the board against um against aggro decks has cell block guards as well additionally so there's, there's like a lot of um small weenies uh to just control the board right and the cargo juggernaut to stabilize at some point of course vader and walker as the finishers uh the viper and all the standard stuff essentially right and then you have a lot of uh removal to takedowns to vanquishes three barrages and uh three times a power two of the dark side right so there's a lot of potential removal and ramp because ramp is broken so uh then the um the sideboard is one of a lot of one-offs to just uh, skew the potential control or mirror matches or or the aggro um matchup right i'm not an expert i'm not gonna lie that i know what's exactly going on over here if there are any tricks so he played 51 cards which is i would just say objectively wrong but uh that's what he did so and he won so whatever i know right um and um I, it's a deck that you should probably try out yourself and if you're non-believer because it plays well i think now second place was a boba who didn't play vaders so that's interesting right i don't know why didn't he play vaders i didn't speak with this guy i think i, I do believe that he might just not have them so uh essentially not having vaders makes your matchup against uh control decks way worse but in general he plays just a lot of smaller drops to skew even more the sabine matchup right so there's this i guess that's a payoff and there was a lot of sabine decks including me uh in in, in this was portion right so if i remember correctly there was nothing else apart from those vaders missing here 
Yeah, other than that, we, we have the change of heart in the main deck and a traitor is in the main deck as well. Traitors in the main deck is something that you typically would expect. Uh, but change of heart, I think this might be one of those cards that you you just like, oh, wait, you play that in the main deck. Interesting. All right, and then we have Emperor's Legion in the sideboard. Not sure how playable that was for him. Another change of heart and the walkers and the relentless in the sideboard against control matchups. So that's, uh, he essentially just pre-boarded against aggro and then... Uh, post match one, uh, he puts in the big boys if he plays in his control deck. So if you think you can, you cannot play Boba without Vader's. I guess here's your reason to try it. If you don't have Vader's because they cost two hundred dollars, try out this version. Right um, now, I can. Which place was he? He was in top eight, but I don't know exactly which place was it. Um, Chewy, I look. I have never played this deck. I have never played against it. I'm going to link it in the description as all of the other decks. I have absolutely no idea how exactly this deck out plays out apart from playing uh, Sentinels and making them sent and making your more units Sentinels and does and control the board. And essentially the unit is the, the leader is just giga big, right? It's a 792 Sentinel with grit. So, I'm not going to like try to like explain you the deck because I never played it. And um, it's just interesting to see Chewbacca um, being in a top 8. I think that's fantastic that the top 8 had um, Kranich and, and Chewbacca uh, to show like this. That essentially, he's an anti-aggro deck. And I think it was a good choice because there's, there was a lot of Sabines, right? And then another Sabine in the top 8. Um, there's the, the, look, this is probably the best thing that I can give feedback about. Uh, his choices were a little bit different than mine, for example. Uh, he played only two Steadfast Battalion, but three Gorilla, uh, Gorilla Attack Pods. If I would want to cut one, I would definitely cut the Attack Pod rather than the Battalion. Battalion seems just like it's being so important in so many matchups. Um, but of course, Battalion gets worse in the aggro matchup when you have to use the base earlier on, right? And then Gorilla Attack Pod... You don't really want to play in mirror match. So I would still probably go for free steadfast instead of free attack pods. But that's my choice. Uh if I would have to do it. Otherwise, pretty standard, but free metal ceremony. Uh one heroic sacrifice in the main, free rebel assault. So free metal ceremony, free rebel assaults, and a heroic sacrifice in main. Right? So that's that's a lot of events when it comes to like just sacrifice like not sacrificing, but like pushing damage. Uh of course for a cause, and two Ewing reinforcements in the main. Now, I don't know how often he did he play that. Probably was just resourcing it a lot. Um, but he, he is, like, trying to build a better map one, sorry, match one against control decks, I guess. I personally just completely cut Ewing reinforcements, and I never, never ever thought to myself, oh, I wish I had Ewing reinforcements right now, you know? So, uh, that's for me. Academy training, I'm assuming he's gonna put that in in a mirror match to run away with trades, um, because if you get just to put, like, you, you play a two drop and then you play an upgrade, if it's not, like, you know, if you play a wing leader and give two experience tokens to something in a mirror match, that's probably game breaking, um, in most cases. So academy training is just, like, additional copies of that for two mana instead of three. I mean, without a body, but it's an additional copy, essentially, right? And then another, another U wing and the bright will hope for the mirror matches, um, to side it in, right? So... Yeah, I'm going to put in all of those links in the description, and I'm going to add more top 8 decks in the description later on. So I myself uh, played a Sabine Ren deck. It was pretty standard apart from the sideboard, so I'm going to give you a link in the description as well, so you can just check it out. Uh, I went 3 wins and 2 losses, and the 2 losses I got were essentially because I'm not a very smart player yet in this game, and I didn't have enough experience to understand what mistake did I do uh, and to not do it, essentially, right? So um, I, I've learned a lot, actually, in this tournament from that, and I would like to explain to you what I learned because I think that's something that maybe more people will do. So we're going to go through uh, the deck pretty quickly. 
I'm going to explain to you, like, it's just going to show the standard cards, very standard. So, three specs, specs for soldiers, three Sabine Ren, very standard, three Battlefield Marine, three Lab Pathfinder, and then we have three Fighters for Freedom, three Fleet Lieutenant, three Echo Base Defenders, of course, three Robots, because those are MVPs. Um, then we have three Battalions, of course, three Guerrilla Attack Pods, and we're going to talk about that for uh, a little bit later on. Three Medal Ceremony, that's another thing that we're going to talk about. Two Rebel Assaults. Uh, then the most important card in the deck for a cause I believe in. And believe it or not, by the way, but I use this card three times in eight matches. And not because I'm a moron, but because I just never drew it. It's insane. I got it like maybe twice when I needed it and once in a match that didn't matter. Like... If you draw those cards, you never put them into resources, by the way. Like, never. Never put those cards into resources. It's incredibly important how vital those cards are to the deck's, like, efficiency. Because it's not only about the damage. Typically, it's going to be 95% of the time, like, for damage. But the point is that you are setting up your next hand. Because you can decide what you are drawing from the next four cards. So, you can dig, essentially, for another copy of For a Cause I Believe In, even if those four cards are not a For a Cause I Believe In. Right? Because I play it, I show four cards, there are like three like, uh, characters in an, in an event that is not needed, like a medal, so I'm going to discard all four, and I dig deeper to the deck to find more for a cause I believe in. It's, um, yeah, I was pretty unlucky with that, but that's not the reason why I lost two matches. Then we have uh, two alli three Alliance X-Wings, of course, three Green Squadrons, then three Wing Leaders, and three Red Three. And of course, the base is the green uh, conversion lab. But one piece of advice, instead of using a token, I have two conversion labs. One it is just with a big marker uh, that I just drew on the card that has a permanent X on it. So I can just flip the card whenever I use the base, right? So I have it like, like this, and then I just flip it like this, right? And then I never have to like have a token with it. Um, so yeah, but now the free lessons from the main deck is that Guerrilla Attack Pods are fantastic and you can use it for a trick with the Energy Conversion Lab. Of course, they're going to matter only against slower decks, right? But they are very good. And if you didn't use your Conversion Lab in the previous any turns and you still have it up, what you can do is you play Conversion Lab, you play the uh, Guerrilla Attack Pod, uh, it goes into the game with ambush. Then you choose to have the ambush effect first. So you attack into a unit. You most likely kill it because of a four attack, right? And then the effect of the card comes in. And if the base had 15 or more damage, it readies itself. And in the next action, you're going to be able to attack with it and deal insane amount of damage because of the grit that the card has. So I actually did it once in a tournament, and it was a game-winning play, um, and I love it very much because of that, but in most cases, when you play mirror matches, uh, not most, in all cases in a mirror match, you just side that out, so it doesn't matter, because you're never going to have base active anyway, um, because you were going to need to use this as soon as possible in a mirror match when it matters, but yeah. Now, another thing that, le that I learned, I'm going to swap those two uh, for two medal ceremonies and three rebel assaults in the future because from my experience and again i'm a newer player i didn't have a lot of games played before right the rebel assault is an mvp i never was in a situation apart from maybe first opening hand that i never that i didn't like it having in hand you know especially good in mirror matches as well um so Medal ceremonies are harder to play because they require the attack to be first and so on. And they're not really good when you're going second in the mirror match. So um, after the experience of my of my tournament, I would play three Rebel Assaults main deck, two Medal Ceremonies main deck. And uh, because of that, you can always just resource one Rebel Assault without feeling super bad about it. And it's an incredibly important card to finish matches or like get the race going. Well, Medal Ceremony is typically just played for a 1-1, one, one, sorry, for, for like one experience token, right? Um, unless you're incredibly lucky and you get a huge advantage. And if, if it gets more value, they're probably going to win the game anyway. But if typically it doesn't, right? And when you go second, uh, you're going to side it out. So if you lose the dice roll, 
that means that you're playing first game with medal ceremonies when you're going second, so it's not ideal. But then you go into the second game, you go first, so you keep them in the in the deck. But then you, if you win, you go third game, and this is the first time you side them out. So in most cases, you are not really happy by having three medal ceremonies in a mirror match, right? But having three herbal assaults can be actually more beneficial because of that, because it's easier to get value out of that than the medal ceremony. So that's one of the things that I learned uh, from that. And now sideboard. Sideboard is a little bit more unique uh, because I changed a lot from the uh, original version of this deck, which is being made by... Let me check my... Uh, it was being made by Bobby Sapphire, the Green Sabine KTOD, right? So I have a different sideboard because I thought to myself that this is going to be more efficient. So I played two Admiral Akbars for the mirror match. The, in my eyes, they did their job. I have won at least one game when I played Admiral Akba in, in, in a mirror match. In one game, it mattered a little bit, but maybe not round winning. But one time I just played Admiral Akba and just instantly won. Not only you can destroy a unit that traded into your unit, and that happens often in a mirror match, right? But it also stays on the board, has a restore, so it's it swings for two essentially, right? when it comes to racing and it, it is very awkward for opponents to clear um so you can also clear some ships if you have the opportunity to do so with a ground unit so that's very nice then uh free disabling fang fighters i think maybe two would have been better uh than three and if i know that i'm gonna play more mirror matches because i played three mirror matches and won two lost one um i would probably change to have three admiral akbars in my sideboard and two disabling fang fighters if i know that my meta game is like a lot of mirror matches right uh then we have two heroic sacrifices which should stay They're good for both mirror match and against control decks right and then three wolfies and this was my biggest mistake that i did the card is good but what I should have done, I never sided them in in a mirror match. And I lost a game for sure because of that. Because even though the deck has 15 two drops and three one drops, I had two opening hands after a mulligan with no two drop, no one drop. And in a mirror match, I would just side out three gorillas for three wolves, right? And then if I'm going second, two medal ceremonies for two Admiral Akbars. And yeah, the rest does, is not really that important. Maybe just side out one something else for one heroic sacrifice, and that's essentially it, right? But that would be like increasing the odds of having a two drop would be vital for me because I lost, I, I won one game when I went second and I didn't have a two drop in a mirror match, but I won that because I used the energy conversion lab with a red three to clear as soon as possible the air of the opponent and that was a, a tempo winning play but in general i feel like i just made a huge misplay in that other mirror match that i lost because of that now the other thing that i learned uh from playing in those two matches i lost one against krennic not the one that won the entire event but i lost because of a situation like this it was four resources turn I have a unit on board, I attack the unit with the unit on board to the base, then my opponent passes. So I flip my Sabine, sorry, not flip my Sabine, use my Sabine to deal one damage to both bases, and he responds with a pass. Now he has open four mana, he's blue collar, so I thought to myself, okay, he has a removal. And I was like, well, he has a removal, so it doesn't matter if I play a unit or not, I just have to play because he's gonna use the removal anyway. So I used my Sabine to flip her on that turn, and he used the um, he used the uh, removal to kill her. And then I played another unit after that, and that of course wasn't cleared, right? And I used the Sabine because the other unit was a uh, robot, the K2SO, right? So I was like. I'm gonna rather have the Overwhelm um, robot with the free damage to the, to the base rather than the Sabine, because I didn't have a battalion in my hand for, for the next turn, right? But the mistake was different. The mistake was that I didn't pass myself. So what I should have done, and would have been 100% a better play, was when I attack with the unit, I deal free damage to the base, he passes, then I use the hero power to deal one damage, and he passes, I should have passed. 
or maybe I should have passed after his pass because I already did three damage to the base for free and he skipped his turn essentially so free damage is insane amount that you can just get it for free and because he passed I can take the initiative and I get another three points of damage into his base because of that and that is most likely one game lost because of that I mean one game not an entire match maybe I would have still lost the match but that one game could have been won if I just didn't make that mistake and then I lost a mirror match because of what I explained already with not siding in uh, the Wolfies. Like, not having enough two drops. And, and also, I, I kept a hand um, with only Sabine as a two drop. And I thought to myself, well, he ha if he has Battlefield Marine, I just most likely lost. And what he plays on turn one? Battlefield Marine. I had to play the Sabine anyway. And then he plays... Um, uh, the fleet lieutenant gives him ambush from the base, clears my Sabine with him, and then f gets five damage to my base. And it's like, at that point, I just lost. I, I lost so much so much tempo and value that it's Im almost impossible to win now the race, right? But that could have not happened if I had the wolfies in my hand, right? Because I then I would have played the 3-2 instead that trades for at least one unit, and I would have been able to maybe regain some control at some point and start racing. Um, so yeah, also I should have just mulliganed more aggressive, even without the wolf um, in the deck, I should have aggressively mulliganed to get a different two drop. Maybe something in the air, or maybe a battlefield marine myself. But I should increase the odds of having a free attack two drop when I'm going second in the mirror match, and that is siding in the wolf, uh, the suspicious veteran, into the deck. So that's uh, that's my learning from playing my own deck. And by the way, before you ask, I'm not using the Ewing reinforcement, the seven mana green white uh, that puts you know like units from the deck because I think if you play those play this card, it slows down your deck. Um, you, ha you have to put a mana every single turn, and if you don't win against a control deck until turn 6, it's most likely already over. So that Ewing reinforcements doesn't really do much, in most cases, and that's why I didn't play it at all. So, yeah. Thank you for watching the video, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment and maybe consider subscribing for more Star Wars Unlimited content. Below the stream, you're going to find also the info how to buy Elgato hardware 5% cheaper and Star Wars Unlimited boosters 5% cheaper as well. See you guys around.